This is the hard thing, you know, we, we go to church and isn't it about sometimes it gets caught up in works. Like no matter how hard you try, sometimes you just get caught up in works rather than love, rather than a relationship. We get caught up and we start to think, oh, I haven't read enough or I haven't prayed enough um, or I haven't done this enough. It's not the question of enough because that's works. It's just a question of turning your heart to him. Just turn your heart. Fix your gaze. Because this Lord's table that he's invited us to, you can access that at any time, like any time at all. In the realm of the spirit, you go to the throne of grace. You are even right now seated in heavenly places in the realm of the spirit. You are in Mount Zion. You are in the heavenly Jerusalem. You are uh, at, where, at the place where the angels and the, the justified spirits of, of the men made perfect. You're there. You're already there. And spiritually, your spirit knows its way around the spirit realm. It's just that our soul needs to be a little bit released from um, the earthly realm to, to, to soar with our spirit. But you've been invited to the Father's table. Every time you take communion, it's the supper of the Lord. It's the supper of the Lord. I lived with, we were an extended family. My grandma was blind. My mother was incurably ill. And so we moved in together. Grandma and grandpa, mum and dad, my brother and I three generations under one house. I loved living that way. I love, it's, it's, it's biblical, it's just, it was just right. And um, what grandma couldn't do, mum did, what mum couldn't, grandma did, but we were often, you know, like, um, I, I'd sit down and I'd have supper with either grandma or granddad, or I'd sit down and have a supper with, with someone in the house. And that, that supper wasn't a quick grab something. It was a, have a cuppa, sort out the problems of the world, share what's on your heart, dawdle, take your time. This is a relationship. Supper, like we had the evening meal, but supper was something special. You know, I knew that I'd get, oh, Grandpa's there. You know, I love my granddad. Grandpa's there. I can sit and have a, a cup of with granddad or whatever it might be. But that, that's, that dawdling over a meal, um, we don't tend to do that anymore. Quite often, you know, in families, they take their meals in front of the TV. We don't necessarily take the time over a family table. And that's a real key for relationships to actually spend time. And I have friends in the South Pacific when I go over there to minister. And um, we, we go out for a meal and it can last five to six hours. We can book in at 5.30, 6 o'clock at night. And when the restaurant is closing, that's when we decide we have to leave. But you know, we just graze the whole night. But it's because we're together and we, we talk, we laugh, we cry. Um, you know, somebody might spill a drink. I mean, we just have such the best time. It's a dawdling over a meal. It's a, it's a, it's a friendship. It's a, it's a covenant meal. It's absolutely wonderful. You share what's in your heart. We cry for each other's families. We laugh about stuff that's going on. It's just a wonderful thing. And that's something that we've lost in our society. We've lost and we need to come back to hospitality. We need to come back to just sitting down and saying, you know what, the best time of my life is sitting down, having a meal, sharing it, and being sociable, building a relationship, listening to my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. But listening, you know what I mean? Just, just dawdling, taking the time. But now it's like, can we finish by 7.30 because the block's on or this is on or that's happening or whatever. And that's, that's just sad. But the Lord has invited you to his table, the Lord's Supper of the Lord. How amazing is that? 
So I went and had, or Danielle and I had to go up to the Sunshine Coast for a meeting a couple of weeks back. And we were, the meeting was going to be held at someone's home instead of in the office. And it was amazing. They went to so much care with the meal, um, the entree, the hors d'oeuvres, <laughs> you know, like it was just amazing. It was the best. They just really put themselves out. And, the, and not only was the meal, but then we sat around for hours just talking afterwards. It was just awesome. And I think this is something we need to build back into our lives. Just build back. Like, who would I like to invite around? What can I do? Elise is really good at hospitality. You know, I'm, I'm much better. My, my cooking skills much better if I organise the cook to do another one to cook, but I'm OK as the hostess. <laughs> but we all have different things. But let's start building time for people back into our lives. And this is what the, the table of the Lord is about. He wants time with you. He doesn't want us to sort of rush in with our prayer time. He doesn't want us to do this or that. How about just sitting down at the table of the Lord and just communing? So in Psalm 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still and restful waters. He refreshes my soul, restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear and dread no evil, for Lord, you are with me. Your rod protects me, your staff guides me, and they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days, the house of the Lord is my dwelling place. The Lord sets a table before you in the presence of his enemies. So you might be at home and you're surrounded by bills. Like, how am I going to pay this bill? What am I going to do about that? Works, works toxic. This is happening. That's happening. And in the spirit realm, you've got all this stuff fluffing around, you know, like building up the pressure, the stress, building up. And the Lord strides in and he says, let me set a table before you. He strides right through the enemy and he lays out a table and he says, let me prepare a table before you in the midst of your enemies, in the midst of spirits of confusion and fear and death and loneliness and anxiety, in the midst of financial pressure, toxic relationships and everything else. He strides right into the midst of your life and he says, let me set a table for you in the midst of your enemies. Our problem with us is we don't stay at the table. Sometimes we get up a bit too early. But we need to stay at the table. And when we do rise, you rise with a revelation of victory. You rise with a strategy that he's given you to get the victory in what you're going through. You rise with something because everything the Lord does is purposeful and mindful. And so, it, and so apart from thoroughly wanting your company and to enjoy your presence, when he says, come and sit at my table, he's also going to give us something because that's his nature. Here's the victory for work. Here's what you need to do about your finances. Here's how to handle your family because he loves you and love always gives. Love always gives gives and you're in the presence of love so he lays the table before you in the presence of your enemies and he says come come and sit come and sit and that word enemies if you look at it in the Hebrew it means anything that puts you into bondage anything that causes you to feel narrow precious like straightened like being squeezed constricted ever hit python in the presence of your enemies, anything that causes you distress, anything that makes you feel like you're besieged by the enemy, anything that is shutting you up, making you feel cramped, anything that is pressing intently and hard upon you, any kind of suffering, any kind of hostility, any kind of enmity, anything that is vexatious, anything that harasses you, you ever feel bullied and oppressed, that's when he wants to set a table before you. Anything that gives you pain, anxiety, any kind of trouble, anything, it doesn't doesn't have, it doesn't matter what it is. He wants to set a table before you in the midst of your enemies because he wants you to know the victory of Jesus Christ.